There was that interesting chart uh, which if we can bring up which is on the flow of financial resources uh, uh, to the commercial sector which showed uh, a fall not just in non-bank credit uh, but also in bank credit as you can see on that one. Uh, Pranjal, uh, uh, was that surprising to you particularly the bank credit part because this looks like it's more of a demand problem than a supply problem right because compared to last year capital issues are better, liquidity issues are better then to see adjusted non-food credit actually decelerate in the first half is a bit worrying. Yes, uh, uh, you know, I know it was not really surprising. I did notice it that, uh, you know, bank credit growth has been uh, pretty sluggish. Uh, you know, we saw that happening since March this year. It's just basically picked up some more pace. Uh, not surprised at all. It is a demand issue. It's also a supply issue. I think it's a mix of both. Generally speaking, we are seeing, you know, when you look at it carefully, that about 30 to 40 percent of the repo rate cuts are getting transmitted into lower lending rates uh, at this point with a one quarter lag. Uh, you know, generally it tends to be about double of that. It tends to be about 60 to 70 percent. So transmission is a bit slow this time. Uh, and I think the main reason is that the output, uh, the, the outlook for GDP growth recovery is quite weak. And also there are a lot of uncertainties about asset quality and so on. So that's making transmission quite slow. And therefore, this time more rate cuts will be needed to get the same amount of transmission, uh, you know, than, than used to be the case in the past. Uh, so yes, I did. I did notice all of this, and all of this makes me believe that yes, this time it's going to be uh, a more uh, long-drawn cycle, and it may need a little more rate cuts uh, than people start as were thinking at the beginning of the cycle. Well, uh, I'd like your comment on this uh, data point as well, because it, then it sort of proves that it's not just about the cost of money, right? It's also the yeah. availability yeah. or the willingness to take money. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I mean, if you look at the sectors which would typically drive credit growth, or at least from a retail perspective, you know, both housing, uh, autos, these sectors have not been performing that well, so that has had an impact. If you also look at the incremental credit to deposit ratio, that's been very, very weak in India for some time. In fact, it even turned negative in the second quarter for, for a couple of months. So from that perspective, I think, you know, it, it is probably a function of, you know, weak aggregate demand and the fact that there are these issues in the banking system, you know, which have limited credit appetite or credit risk uh, assessment has, has changed. Uh, these factors will eventually change. And, and you know, I, I think as demand picks up gradually uh, through the next six months, we should see uh, marginal demand for credit picking up as well. But credit growth always is a lagging indicator. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to see a big pickup for credit coming through before we really see people start spending money. Uh, and that, I think, you know, if you look at RBI's own projections, they are factoring in a pretty sharp recovery sequentially in growth uh, from the third quarter of the fiscal year. Yeah. I think uh, it could, you know, as Pranjal was saying, you know, it could be a far more gradual recovery than that. So, but overall, I think I would agree with RBI's assessment that uh, over the next three to six months, we should see some semblance of a recovery, although the recovery may be a lot more shallower than what they're penciling in.